Hi, I'm Lee Farrow. I'm a marketing strategist and SEO copywriter. I'm about to be on the online prosperity show. We're going to talk about marketing strategies, how a pharmacist became a marketing um, guru. And we will also mention about why sales is such an important element of marketing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarubinga, and today we have an exceptional guest that's joining us. Lee, how are you doing, my love? I'm well, thanks, Prosper. How are you? Absolutely. I'm so excited about today's episode. I've been watching your stuff. We've been talking and I just can't wait to get to the bottom of everything that you've been creating and to our audience Lee is a marketing strategist and SEO copywriter who hails from the beautiful Tasmania here in Australia. Now, Lee focuses on helping coaches and consultants to build powerful organic marketing strategies, which makes it easy for you to attract and book ideal clients without paid ads or complex sales funnels. Now, Lee, this is such a great offer, especially for coaches and consultants. A lot of them are struggling to even show up online or get the kind of leads that they uh, want in order to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. If only they knew you existed. So just tell us a little bit about what led you to become a marketing strategist and an SEO copywriter. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a funny story actually, Prosper, because it didn't start in the digital world at all and it didn't start anywhere to do with copywriting or marketing. My journey started right back when I decided to become a pharmacist. So people go, what? what? You know, that's so different to marketing and nothing to do with writing at all. But when I was at school, I was very much, um, or I guess I'm very much left brain, right brain sort of person. So I equally love maths and science and all that sort of analytical stuff, but I really um, love the creative things as well. So, you know, photography and writing and things like that. So when it came time to choosing a career, I had to choose one way or the other and I chose science at that point, went and became a pharmacist and enjoyed about oh, 20 years in that in that industry um, and I really love that. But I sort of got to a point where I was, feeling like something else was missing. I hadn't really given my creative side much of an opportunity yet. So I thought, well, now is the best time. COVID gave me a bit of a boost with that. And um, I'd already been blogging for a little while. So I knew that I I could build up an audience and I knew I had um, some skills in the writing sense. So that led me on to finding copywriting. And I'm like, what's this copywriting all about? Uh, learned a bit more, went and found some mentors and some coaches with that, got trained up, and that's how I started my business um, as a freelance copywriter. Absolutely. Um, that, yeah, that then soon led on to the, the SEO work. I got myself some more coaches and learned all that uh, element because that supported the copywriting uh, so well. Uh, and then, um, yeah, it was a natural progression into marketing. And the, the funny thing about that is that... Um, it was my own need in my own business to learn more about marketing because I was struggling in those early days to find my clients and to get enough leads coming through. So I knew that there was something missing. It wasn't all going to be based around just great writing so or, or, or great SEO. There was some other elements and that led me on to learning a lot more about marketing, finding my own coaches in that space as well and sort of filling in all the gaps that I'd been missing up to that point. Absolutely. I quite like that. And I don't know if you've actually realized you're still in the same business of providing painkillers. <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, the pain that a lot of coaches have is not generating leads and not being able to maybe create recurring revenue streams or things of that nature. And your strategies that you have come up with alleviate that pain. So I you just so. move from the and start. far less far less side effects too. <laughs> you know, painkillers <laughs> come with all sorts of side effects. So yeah, my marketing strategies don't. So that's a that's definitely a win. <laughs> Fantastic. So a lot of people when they're sort of growing up, they have this aspiration, you know, like I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer. Was 
pharmacy something that was a childhood dream or was it like you said you wanted to follow science yeah no it wasn't a childhood dream it was a very again it was a very analytical choice which um sort of just fell into place it was a it was me looking at okay what are my skills in that sense and what could i go and study at university to come out and have a secure job right from the outset you know i saw, i saw a lot of my um uh, sisters, friends, and and other people I knew going off to uni and doing sort of more general degrees, and then they didn't it didn't really translate directly into a job. So I'm like, right, I can use my um, my maths and my science skills um, and my interest in in human biology. Like I, that was like an area I really enjoyed, and sort of uh, reverse engineer what you know degree I needed to to choose to then uh, lead onto a job. So I knew that I didn't really want to be a doctor. Um, and uh, I, I like the idea of doing vet science or something like that, but I didn't want to move too far away from home to study. So it ended up being pharmacy was the was the pick. Absolutely. Now, in any given scenario, you know, um, when your family has already accepted that this is your career of choice and then you then throw a spanner in the works that not, this is not what I'm going to be doing. I'd like to hear what sort of conversations were happening at the Christmas table or the dinner table when you <laughs> told people that what they hoped for you or they anticipated for you is never going to happen. You're going to go out on a limb and try this marketing thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. But I think for my family, like my my parents, my sisters, um my husband my kids they they all know me so well and they know that I've I've been a writer at heart for my whole life you know like I started writing as soon as I could start reading I'm like wow books are amazing I want to write these things but then when it came to it I'm like I don't really have a book inside me and that's what a lot of people went to when I said oh I think it's time for me to make a um a move away from pharmacy they're like oh you, you're gonna go and write a book and I'm like no <laughs> I don't have a book in me. I need to find another avenue for for my creativity and for my writing skills. Um, yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't a massive surprise to anyone really. They're like, "Oh, that's great! You can give that that sort of side of your personality, those skill set, uh, a chance to thrive now." Fantastic! You see, from what you've told us, you've had a tremendous support. Because now you're mentioning you've had support from the family and you also had mentors and coaches and people that were always by your side. How important is, is it to have that sort of, um, you know, you know, cushion or safety net around you, especially when it comes from people that, um, you know, make it psychologically safe for you to pursue your endeavors? Yeah, it was really important for me because when I decided that, I, I was going to leave pharmacy behind. Uh, I did. I did start out doing, um, trying to sort of build up a business on the side, but it, it, they were so conflicting those those two industries. You know, trying to be a freelance copywriter and trying to be a a, um, a community pharmacist. Just there was no crossover, and it was very hard to switch between the two. And if I was working in the pharmacy, I couldn't be you know talking to clients or prospects or answering emails or anything like that. And then I had to always shift into this, this different mindset of being the copywriter and I was working the evenings and working on the weekends. Uh, and, you know, I was so lucky that I had the support of my family um, and my husband and my kids to do all that. I know it wasn't easy for them because it took a lot of time in the evenings and, and the weekends. But when I made that decision to go all in and I'm like, well, it's going to be too hard to do this on the side. I need to really make a clean break and go all in on this. Um, I thought, oh, I'm doing a really silly thing here. I haven't got a plan B. I knew I didn't want to go back to pharmacy. I'm like, no, I need to make that clean break. Um, so I only have plan A. But because I didn't have plan B, I think it made me more um, determined to make my plan A work <laughs> because there was no going back. I had to make it work. Um, so, yeah, making that clean break from pharmacy was what I needed. Uh, but, yeah, definitely having the support of everyone around me saying, yeah, you can do this. Even even my dad, who's a very successful businessman, but has no idea about online stuff. Like he's very old school with all his business sense. And I'll try and explain things to him. Uh, and, you know, he even though he really didn't understand, he doesn't understand a lot of it, he's been very supportive as well. Absolutely. Now, 
being a copywriter is, you know, synonymous to being a salesman, but only in writing or in print. Now, did you have to really change who you were? Because in pharmacy, I don't think there's quite a lot of selling happening. What what sort of mindsets did you have to adopt in order for you to now get into this new role of yours? Yeah, the, I think uh, learning all the, the copywriting skills, if I found it quite easy to shift into a role where I was writing sales copy for clients because when you're in your own business, it's very hard to see the features and the benefits and, and know what your customers or clients need to hear from you because you're sort of, you're so immersed in it yourself. You don't, it's hard to sort of take a step back and look at what they need to hear. So I was that person looking from the outside in, knowing what I needed to draw out in that language for that business to, to help you know, bring in more clients or customers. But when it came to my own business, it was super hard. And I I know this from talking to lots of other copywriters that they can write copy for anyone, but when it comes to their own copy, it's, it's almost impossible. Uh, and I think that comes from a place of feeling, well, you're putting yourself out there. You know, when you're a service-based business, you're not selling a product. You're not, it, it's, you know, you can be a little bit externalized if you're selling products, but when it comes to service-based, you're selling your services that, you, you know, you're selling yourself in a way and it can feel very, very um, arrogant or egotistical when you're trying to, you know, say, oh, yeah, I'm all this and, you know, you should hire me and look how great I am. So I think it's not so much the, the sales copy but knowing that it's writing about yourself and your own skills, it feels. So that was the, the most challenging part, trying to get past that shift into um uh, trying to sell my own services without feeling too arrogant and not taking it personally when it was a no because not everyone's going to say yes and it's not because they don't like you or anything like that doesn't come in, that shouldn't even come into it um it just might not be the right fit for them so um yeah that i think that was the the trickiest thing to overcome i can only imagine it's never easy trying to show up in a world and say, hey, look at me, this is what I've got and this is what it does for you. But it takes time up until you've actually sort of grown into the value that you have seen, you know, um, you know, your cl- clients or the people that you're helping actually achieve. Now, maybe walk us through the sort of unique processes or maybe strategies that you've actually used now for yourself to grow your business that could actually benefit other small to medium business owners, because you've done this from the ground up. It's not something that you bought into or something that was, um, you know, um, natural to you. Mm, yeah. So uh, I obviously had already my SEO skills and my copywriting skills. Uh, but, you know, when I was still a copywriter, uh I still had big gaps in my own marketing strategy. So that's what I had to learn for myself. And that's when I realized that um, the a lot of the clients I've been working for, you know, even though they had, you know, this wonderful copy and they might have optimized their website really well, if they still had, you know, similar gaps in their marketing strategy, they're never going to see the return on investment of the copy that I'd written for them because they had these other big gaps. So some of the, I think two of the the biggest things that stood out for me that really got my marketing business going and what I help my clients do now is, um, well, the first thing is sales, which technically isn't marketing at all, but it's so completely enmeshed together. You know, you can't have sales without marketing, you can't have marketing without sales. So understanding how to have a very um, educational-based uh, sales process that doesn't feel pushy, that doesn't feel salesy at all was was a massive game changer for me. Uh, and also understanding the the power in building relationships and doing that with very simple, authentic conversations, one-on-one with people. Um, I do that through LinkedIn because it's a great platform to not only find my ideal type of clients uh, and to start building the audience there, but to, to it's really easy to reach out and start those conversations and continue those conversations. And you just never know where a conversation may lead. So I have a lot of fun with that. Um, it's it's not structured in any way. It flows very naturally. And I've met some great people through that, some of whom, you know, become clients in the end. Some might become great network partners and um you know, I just feel like I've got all these friends on LinkedIn now. It's lovely. 
Oh, absolutely. I quite like how you are going through the education route because people come to the internet to get information. And if you happen to be the person or the business that's providing that information, then they get to know you, like you, and trust you. And we all know that people do business with those they know, like, and trust. And just coming from that aspect alone of wanting to educate other people, would it be why you were drawn towards maybe um, modalities like SEO? Because I've gone to define SEO as not search engine optimization, but simply educating others. Yeah, and and I love I love how you've <laughs> you've changed it up like that. But it is so true, especially with all of Google's changes. It is so much more about education now than just you know um, packing a whole lot of keywords into an article and ticking those boxes. So yeah, the educational component definitely comes through in uh, the content that I post and the content that I help my clients create for their for their own businesses. But it also forms the basis of uh, the sales process that I I use myself, and again I help my clients create for their businesses. Because uh, again, you think of sales calls or uh, another sort of sales processes, and people expect it to be all about that that um, that person who's trying to sell something. Oh, here's what I've got to sell, and here's what I'll give you, and here's how much it costs, and and, you know, here's what you'll get out of it without actually taking the time first to speaking to their prospect and finding out, hang on a minute, what are they looking for? What are they struggling with? What what information are they lacking? What gaps have they got in their situation? And then introducing some new information to them so they can sort of understand why they've struggled, why they've been stuck at point A and can't get to point B. And then it sort of all fits into place. And then by the time you then... Um, have the opportunity to introduce how you can help them. They're like, oh, well, that makes complete sense because now I can see why I've struggled um, and why I haven't been able to do it on my own. And it makes complete sense the the type of help that you could come in and give me. Absolutely. And, and I quite like how you brought in that whole having to understand your customer first because not everyone is going to be your customer we were laughing earlier on when we were saying you you're going to need to introduce uh, the video and you were simply saying hey not 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 you not everyone is going to like you or whichever way it happens but it's human um sort of nature to want to be liked to want people to buy from us without having um you know done a lot of things and there's studies that show that people actually like to buy stuff but they don't like to be sold to. Now, how do you go about creating this sales system that actually efficiently converts these leads into, into clients, um, especially for your coaching business? First of all, without sounding or feeling all salesy, like what everybody else does not like. Uh, yeah, so it all goes back to the very first step, which is building that strong foundation for the marketing strategy. And that's all based around your market positioning, which is knowing um, who you help. So understanding who your ideal client is, uh, how you help them. So what your offer is and, and you know, what the benefits and features are of that and why they should choose you over anyone else. Because obviously there's going to be loads of coaches and consultants out there um, you know, helping people in, in lots of similar ways, but you have to give them a reason to choose you. You know, why you? Why not, you know, the next person down the road? Uh, so unless you've got that positioning right, you're never going to be reaching out to the right types of clients. You're sort of going to be still trying to reach out to the masses and the masses aren't interested in what you've got to say or what you've got to sell. So get your positioning right first and align all your online content, you know, your LinkedIn uh, headline, your LinkedIn profile, the content you put out, your website, everything like that uh, around that, that marker position that you've created. And then when you, you know, you uh, prospects are reaching out to you and, and you're getting on a, a sales call with them. I call them sales calls, but really they're like a discovery session or a clarity session or something like that because a majority of that call is based around finding out what that person is struggling with, where they're trying to head, what those goals are, breaking it right down, uh, and then introducing the new information about your offer uh, and how it's, it's going to lead into the outcomes that they really want to get. Um, so once all that is in alignment, and you get the right people on the calls, it's almost a no-brainer because they've seen all your content, 
they understand how you can help them um, and, you, you know, you've opened their eyes to why they've struggled. Um, you've helped them connect the bigger dots of why it's important to fix this problem as well. Um, and, yeah, it, it just it becomes a no-brainer. So it's not pushy. It's not salesy. Um, my sales process is also not all jammed into that one call because I think people need time to process all the information. Like we cover an awful lot in that call. And by the end of it, people's minds are just like, whoa, I had no idea that, you know, this makes so much sense or um, oh, I've got so much to think about. You know, these are the things I hear a lot from people that I talk to. So I built that into the system. You know, we stop the call. I let them go away and process the information. I give them some more um, value by giving them um, an activity to do to, you know, help them understand how I work and to just help them along their own journey as well. And then we can come back onto a follow-up call and um, talk about the next steps if it's right for them. Absolutely. I, I quite like that because it's relaxed and you're literally giving the client, um, you know, room to breathe and actually make a decision whether you're the right fit for them or not, not just jamming whatever products or services that we might have just so that we can make a quick buck. Now, you keep referring to LinkedIn and how you will be using this, you know, just to make these natural conversations that then lead to, um, you know, that seamless sort of sales call. And um, they say some people need maybe between 13 to about 25. It keeps changing depending on who is saying touch points um, in order for them to actually then be convinced that this is the right decision that they want to make. Now, can you share how you have been leveraging these simple and natural conversations and how they've actually helped you build the relationships that generate high quality leads for yourself? It's it's funny, like people always want to know, like, what's the secret? What what templates do you use? You know, what are the magic words that you have to write and things like that? But really, at the end of the day, it is just being a really nice, friendly human being. Like, really, that's that's all it takes. So my my key focus with um on LinkedIn is first of all, you need to, again, I come back to knowing who your audience are. And in that way, I know that I can reach out with connection requests to the right sort of people, the people that I know that I can help, the people that are going to be interested in the content I've got to share. So even if we don't become, you know, a, 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 have a working relationship, I know that they'll be able to benefit from the content that I'm putting out. So it starts right at that connection point. I always add a connection message with my request. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But um, the person will get that connection request. They'll see a really um, simple, basic, you know, hey, how's it going type of message. It'd be great to connect, you know, um, from me. They'll often then go back and look at my profile or my headline or something like that. And because, again, everything's in alignment, my positioning is there and they can see themselves in that, it's a bit of a no-brainer to then connect. So I have a really high connection rate, um, probably above standards, about 55 60%. Um, which is pretty good, I think, for, for, I think, I'm not sure, I haven't checked lately what the standard connection rates are. Um, but then because I've started the connection with a message, as simple as it sounds, it gives me that opportunity to continue the conversation, right? So if I just connected with someone uh, and didn't add a message, that's fine. And I could probably jump in there and start a conversation. But if I've started it from the outset, it doesn't feel awkward or out of the blue if I then go in and start messaging them. So they, uh, some people will connect and message me back and I will then continue that conversation. But if they don't uh, say anything back when they connect, then I'll follow up and I'll send them a follow-up message and say, you know, thanks for connecting. You know, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, your content that you're putting out on LinkedIn. And then I end with a question because when you end a uh, message in the DMs with a question, it inspires more conversation. It helps, you know, push that conversation forward. And it doesn't, and my questions are nothing to do with business. They're nothing to do with marketing. They're very, um, they're very random <laughs> and I have a lot of fun with them and I get such great response because people were just like, what? You're asking me about, you know, X, Y, Z, and that's so uncommon. Um, and so people are often drawn into those conversations because they are just so natural and normal and not businessy. And I think people are so sick of those businessy related 
messages on on LinkedIn. You know, we get all get the pitch slaps. We get people coming in talking about, you know, oh, how I can help you and here's a recess for you and, you know, do you want to jump on a call and push, 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 and and people will just, you know, um, move way, way back from that. So I just start with these natural conversations and I always end with that an open-ended question to encourage people to talk, um, you know, to, to reply to me. Now, it doesn't always go very far. Some some will go, you know, further than others. And But the more curious someone gets, the more likely they are to go back and look at my profile. They'll be seeing my content, you know, even if the conversation had stopped in the DMs, they'll be seeing my content come through and then they get curious again. So it's... it. <sighs> The natural progression is different for all prospects. Um, for some people, it's as simple as connecting with me, starting to see my content and going, yeah, I need this and booking a call. For others, it's having a bit of a chat, a bit of a fun chat in the DMs, and then that sort of wraps up. And and then they're like, oh, I haven't heard from her for a while, but I've been seeing the content. Actually, I think I do need some help in that, in that sense. And for other people, we'll have a conversation and they'll be like, so tell me about, you know, how you actually help people with their marketing. Um, I can, you know, I've been watching your content and I'm finding it really helpful. Maybe this is what I need. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's jump on a call and we can talk further about your situation. So it goes in lots of different directions, but I always come back to the position of, how would I like people to respond to me? How, what sort of messages do I like getting from people? And I do that, uh, that that's sort of what forms the, the basis of my strategy. I think, I think it has got a lot to do with abundance, right? Because so many people have that scarcity mindset. Now that we're connected, I need to get something out of this person speedy quick. And half of the time that always brushes against that person because most of the times, you know, like we said earlier on, people like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. And if we end up just selling to people, then they either block us or uh, delete us and move um, away from those sort of conversations. So I think it has a lot to do with the mindset of how you're actually approaching your business um, uh, moving forward. And talking about your own business model, you've actually shifted from doing stuff for people to actually doing stuff with them, which I think explains why you really need to take them on a journey. Because if you're going to be working with somebody, they better be somebody that you you absolutely like working with. Otherwise, it will be like eating sandpaper for breakfast. And um, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? So how, how did this shift sort of contribute to your business growth? I like that eating sandpaper for, for breakfast. Um, does not sound pleasant at all. Yeah, so the the doing for people, which was my freelance copywriting, um, shifted into the doing with people because when I uh, when I sort of fit the final pieces of the marketing puzzle together for myself, and I realized, hang on, this is why a lot of my copywriting clients and SEO clients weren't getting the the results that they still were were wanting to get. And, I, you know, this is how I can help people better. I can actually round out my offer and help everyone fill in the gaps for themselves. Uh, and sure, I could go in there and do all the work for them, but I I decided that um, it's better to, you know, it's the whole give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man a fish, teach a man a fish, he eats for a lifetime, that sort of mentality. So I thought if I can work with my clients and, you know, guide them along, teach them how this is all built from the from the ground up, then and and you know, do certain elements for them um that they need doing that don't, you know, like a one-off sort of thing, like, you know, getting their LinkedIn profile optimized, you know, I'll go and do that for them because that's just a, a once-off set and done. Um, but then the things that are the ongoing things like creating their content and uh, reaching out to referral partners and building their audience, I teach them how to do that for themselves. And the beauty of that is not only do they understand all the aspects of their marketing then um, and, and how it all fits together and why all those arms are important, you know, working together, but it means that at the end of our time together and they've got a fully built marketing strategy, organic marketing strategy, that if they make a tweak to their business, they want to add a new offer in, they want to change their direction, they want to uh, reach a different target audience maybe um, or, or build a whole other business altogether, they'll understand exactly what they need to do to their marketing strategy to make 
you know, to take it in that new direction, to pivot it to whatever they're going to do because they've learnt it the whole system along the way. So, you know, I think if I went in there and and just built it all out for them and then left it with them and said, there you go, there's a working marketing strategy for you, off you go, you just continue that, and if something changes, they would be like, in their business, they'd be like, oh, but I don't know what to do. I need a whole new marketing strategy. I'm going to have to go and pay for a whole new marketing strategy to be built. So I'm sort of giving the power back to people that they um, can do it all for themselves, I suppose, at the end. Yeah. And, and you know, they also have the option at the end if there's certain elements that they don't particularly like doing or they're not particularly good at, that they can outsource those if they wish. But, again, they understand w- you know, how those elements work so they're better placed to find someone to outsource it to because they understand it so innately. I quite like, and I really enjoy talking to people that seemingly get it, especially when it comes to marketing. And you, Lee, are an epitome of that. And I bet your pharmacist or pharmaceutical colleagues are just watching this in awe, going, wait a minute, this girl was crafting portions with us now, she's in a whole different uh, field and, you know, really making the the, the best of it. But looking at what you've achieved, this is something that maybe people will be like, yeah, yeah, it's only, you know, pertaining to her. This doesn't happen in everyday scenarios. Maybe you can share with us a either testimony or some sort of a success story that a client of yours has actually benefited from your marketing strategies, just saw that, that doubting, you know, Thomas watching this video right now might actually start noticing that these two can happen for them. Yeah, so I like to point out that, you know, my my program and my services aren't for everyone. So I, I work with coaches and I work with consultants that have a four-figure offer uh, because the a marketing strategy for smaller ticket items or for product-based businesses uh, is very, very different. So the way I help shape out these marketing strategies are for people that have these higher ticket um, offers, packages, programs, whatever you want to call it. They usually are working one-on-one with uh, their client or or one to, you know, a small team. Um, and, and I suppose it doesn't really matter what industry they're coming from because so long as they are fitting that that mold of you know they are they have a service offer it is a higher ticket item uh, the same strategy will work for them and i'm i mean obviously i'm proof <laughs> that it works and i'm not teaching people something different to what i do it's not like you know here is the here's what i'm going to build for you but i do all these other you know special secret things that i'm not going to tell you about that that make me successful. Um, I do, you know, what I teach people is exactly what I um, I do for myself. But I have, uh, again, people often come to me and think, oh, organic marketing sounds pretty slow. I don't really have a year for this to start working. Um, and they go, that's why I really want to just try some Facebook ads quickly or something like that or some Google ads, get some, get some leads in. But um, organic and, and there's a whole nother conversation there about why that's a, a bad strategy to take to jump straight into ads. But um, an organic strategy can actually be fast, you know, act faster than you think. So for some of my clients, just getting their positioning uh, sorted out, they that they didn't have clear, and we do a lot of work around their offer. So getting really clear on what's going to be a, a one very val- valuable signature offer Um and then optimizing their LinkedIn profile, already I have some of my clients are getting some early leads just in those first couple of weeks of that work because all of a sudden they've already got an audience there, but now the audience is seeing uh, very clearly who they're helping, how they're helping them and why they should choose them. The offer's really clear. The offer's very valuable. And when we round out their sales process, all of a sudden when they get those leads coming through, they're landing them. So, yeah, so some of my clients are... Um, especially if they do the work um, early on, they start getting leads and landing clients, you know, only halfway through working together. So it's really, really amazing. Absolutely. And one of the first things that you do with people is help them get clarity uh, on the direction of which they are taking. And I think you do this through a free marketing um, session, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the the first call there is is to understand what's going. What are they doing? Like, where are they at? Where are they trying to get to? Uh, and then looks at look at why they're not getting there. What, where are the gaps? And so I'll um, uh, take them through a process of what the different elements of an organic marketing strategy looks like and and what needs to be there and then we'll have a look at what they're doing for each of those things and where those gaps might be and what they would need to do to get them all working together for them fantastic and what would the best way that people can get a hold of you there lee in order to initiate oh, this yeah session? i have a, a a link on my website uh, sorry, on my LinkedIn profile, um, if you click that button, I think it says visit my website. It has all the links there to book a session or you can just go to my website that also has a button to, to book a call. Fantastic. I'll make sure that all those links are in the show notes so that people can actually get started on that clarity because if you can see around the edges and if you can see exactly where you are, it's easier to then plan ahead to where you want to go to and um i think people like lee have paved the way for you so you don't have that many false starts um, that a lot of people have especially when it comes to marketing their business now you mentioned something that is um you know that is topical a lot of people just want instant results instant gratification you know what i mean i don't have a year like you said to wait for this thing to um manifest or to actually come together what sort of advice would you give to other sort of business owners that are looking to first of all maybe make the shift that you did from the career that you had to what you now have and maybe just really um create a business that's profitable and enjoyable well i think the biggest shift happens in your mind first your mindset you have to you know from a marketing standpoint you have to have a a farmer mentality. You've got to understand that, you know, the seeds that you are planting mm. this season, you're not going to harvest for another season or two. Uh, whereas a lot of people approach their marketing with a hunter mentality that they're like, oh, well, I'll just, um, I'll run some ads or I'll, I'll put out a, you know, a whole lot of content or I'll, um, uh, I will start a, a blog or a, a marketing list or something like that. Uh, sorry, an email marketing list. And, you know, I need those leads. You know, why aren't the leads coming in? Um, it just doesn't work like that. So even if you run some ads, unless you've done all that pre-work of positioning and getting all your offer sorted out and, and clarified and you've got your sales process, you know, down pat and all your online content is all optimised and aligned, uh, essentially, you know, you need to know that things are working in the organic space first before you can run ads because ads aren't a marketing answer in themselves. They are only amplifying those organic results. So you need to have those organic results first before you can amplify them. So rushing in and thinking, oh, well, I'll just run some ads to to get this business up and going is also the wrong way to look about it. Is that very much that hunter mentality? So, yeah, ads do have a place down the track when you know your organic strategy is working really well and you can amplify those results, uh, but not in the early days. So I think for someone wanting to transition out of something and into their new business, they do need to look at a longer game, that it isn't necessarily a, a quick um, a quick process. They do need to have a strategy behind it. And But even if that strategy is an organic marketing strategy, it does happen sooner than they think if they put the work into it. Absolutely. It's more like you can't put lipstick on a pig, right? Well, you could have it go, <laughs> but <laughs> and, yeah, you probably wouldn't be very successful. <laughs> absolutely. Fantastic. Well, I'm really excited with what we've created here and I'm really, really grateful that you've taken the time with us on the show today. I mean, obviously you've done the work, it shows, and your clients are enjoying what you've created for them and things of that nature. But it would be remiss for me, Lee, to not ask you this, you know, as a parting question, because um, you've come a long way. You've shifted gears. You've done so much to reinvent yourself. And now you're showing up to help other people be doing have a happier existence as well. Now, you came across a few mentors and you came across a few people that helped you along the way. 
And, um, you know, some of them might have propelled you to where you are right now. And some of them might have distracted you. If you would have come across a younger Lee at the age you are now, you know, knowing what you know about who you've become, what sort of advice would you give to her while she's putting on that white dust coat, getting ready to go to her pharmaceutical job? And, um, you know, you could just whisper something to her ears. <laughs> Uh, I still have that white coat hanging in my wardrobe too. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. <laughs> um, what would I tell her? I would say, you know, you've enjoyed your pharmacy career. You've got a lot out of it and you've helped a lot of people, but it's not going to be forever and that's okay. Don't feel like that that's a failure. That is just, you know, that that's the the natural life time or lifespan of that career so don't feel like you've failed and you're giving up on that to then shift gears in fact do it sooner do it sooner because it you know you do have it inside of you to do that and make sure when you do take that leap of faith reach out for support reach out for some coaches and mentors right from the outset because it's going to help boost your confidence your skill set and make things happen a lot faster for you wow that that is some profound advice right there. Just <laughs> do it. Just go out and do it. Now, Lee, obviously, you know, um, you know, our audience who happen to be coaches and consultants are usually looking into the power of the now, which is basically what we've just done. But as human beings, we're always future pacing ourselves. We want to see what's in store, what's in the future. You've come from you know, the pharmaceutical industry, now you're making a name of yourself in the marketing sort of industry. What is next? What can people expect from uh, Lee moving forward? Gee, putting me on the spot, Prosper, I don't know. Um, I think I just want to continue in the space that I'm in for a while and and keep uh, uh, solidifying, you know, the results I can get for my clients and you know, while I've got my three kids, they're still quite, you know, they're youngish, they're all at school still, and they need a lot from me. This business model that I've created uh, and the, the time I can invest in my clients is working so perfectly that I think at least for the next five years, I don't really see a shift happening. I think I've found my happy place in my career, in my work, in how I can help my clients and how I can still be essentially a full-time good enough mum. <laughs> so, I don't know, come back to me in maybe three years and ask me then what's going to happen after that. I might have a better answer. Fantastic. I, I can tell you what you probably need. Everybody else that saw you growing up expected you to pencil a book. I think you always a book. <laughs> okay, I'll make it just a really like short like, little novella or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Lee, for sharing your insights and expertise with us today on the Online Prosperity Show. And um, I, I really had a blast just getting to know a little bit about yourself and what it is that you actually do for your clients. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Prosper. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. And if you're a coach or consultant that's looking to elevate your marketing game, be sure to connect with Lee. Um, visit her website, I will put all that information in the show notes so that you too um, can get connected with Lee and just take advantage of her free marketing clarity sessions. Because if you're clear on where you're going, it's easier for you to execute and you would actually understand what it would cost you, not in monetary terms, but the actual cost of you engaging in marketing that will actually help you get in front of your audience. That way you can stop doing random acts of marketing, which are leading you nowhere. And um, if you know anything, attracting a steady stream of ideal clients can be easy with the right strategies in place. And I think Lee has made it easy for us to understand how that uh, can be done. Until next time, this is Prosper and Lee. We're signing off from the Online Prosperity Show. Stay prosperous. Bye for now.